Well, the California FFA Forestry Contest this year has a wedge prism as a team activity. So I'm going to do a little demonstration on how to use the wedge prism and uh, how it's the activity is supposed to go um, at a contest. So I came up here. I got quite a few little trees we can look at. Uh, typically at a contest, you know, it might be at UC Davis or Chico or something like that. They're not going to have a lot of trees like this. But um, if you can find a grove like this to practice with your team, it's a great way to do it. Okay, so first of all, basal area factor, what is that? Well, we're trying to determine basal area per acre. Basal area is measured in square feet. So what we're doing is we're going to take a slice of a tree at four and a half feet, and we're going to get a cross section, and it's going to be round. So what we would do is you would take the diameter uh, pi times radius squared, and you would get the square feet or the, or the area of that round. And then you would extrapolate that out to determine square feet per acre. Well, that's what basal area is. It's the cross section of a tree at, at four and a half feet, um, uh, the, the square feet of the circle that it makes. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to use a 10 BAF wedge prism. The curricular code says a 10 or a 30. Well, we're trying to do 30s or encourage contest coordinator, I'm sorry, 10s. We're trying to encourage contest coordinators to use the 10s because they're more practical. Well, a 10 BAF or basal area factor wedge prism is indicated on the wedge prism itself. Check this out. Trying to get it to focus here. Come on, focus. Uh, let's see. It says it right there. Right on the... It says it on the wedge prism, but I can't seem to focus on it. If I hold it still. Anyway, it says it right there. It could, it's liable to be a 10, 20, or 30. Well, this one is a 10. It says it right there where my thumb is. You just can't read it because it won't focus. Anyway, trust me, it says 10. Okay, now, um, they're going to, at the contest site, they're going to give you a plot center. So when you do this, you have to make sure that the wedge prism is over this plot center and not the student. Do not let the student stand on the plot center. The wedge prism has to be over the plot center, kind of like this. Okay, um, then uh, in a plot like this, you're going to go around in a circle because there's a, quite a few trees. So you would go all the way around uh, 360 degrees and you would measure all these trees. At a contest, uh, you, they're probably not going to have a lot of trees. So, you know, they're probably not going to have to go in a big circle. But in this case, you would if you have a lot of trees. Okay, now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use the wedge prism to count the number of trees that are in. So we're going to go around here with the wedge prism. Let's say now that we count four trees that are in. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means we're going to count four trees. Then we take the four trees and we multiply that times the BAF, which is 10. So then our answer then, pretty simple, would be 40 square feet per acre. Pretty simple, right? So you're only concerned with the trees that are in. If you count three trees that are in, then it's then your answer is 30 square feet per acre. Okay, now a 10 BAF is, all, is going to measure a tenth of an acre sized plot. And that's why you, you multiply times 10. A 30 BAF wedge prism would, be, would measure a 30th of an acre plot. And that's why you would multiply that times 30. A tenth acre plot has a radius of about 37 feet. So just to kind of give you an idea how the wedge prism works. So these trees here around me, any tree that's within about 37 feet is what the wedge prism is going to count as in. Okay, now let me show you how it works. Here we go. First of all, make sure that the wedge prism is over top of the plot center. They're going to have a little flag or something for you. And then you take the wedge prism like this. We're just going to do this tree right here in front of us. 
take it just like this and you look through there and it creates an optical, it's not an optical illusion, but it's an optical variance. I don't know what that is, but it makes a slice out of that tree. Now, the wedge or the chunk that is taken out of the tree, you wanna measure at four and a half feet. The chunk that is taken out of the tree is still touching the stem. Therefore, that tree is in. By the way, the tree leans a little bit, so you wanna go perpendicular like that. Okay, so we count that tree as in. Now let's go for that, this other tree that's farther away and a little bit smaller in diameter. That tree, when we take the section out of the wedge prism is not touching the stem. Therefore, it's out and we don't count it. This tree is in, we're gonna count it. How about that big tree way back there? It's, it's far away and it is, looks like it's in. It's a pretty big tree. So we would count that big tree. But these two smaller trees in front of it, those two smaller trees are out. Okay, now, so that's pretty simple enough. We would just go around here. If the, if the section of the tree in the, in the wedge is touching the stem, then we count it. The issue arises when the, there is a tree that is borderline. So let's say your plot center is back here a little bit. Now, what we have is a tree that might be borderline. So we take this wedge prism we set it up here and we look at that and I'll bet it's gonna be borderline. Oh my goodness, I don't know if that's touching or not. It's real close, it's probably in, but if you don't know, you're gonna have a borderline tree or you're likely to have a borderline tree. So that one might be borderline. What do you do with a borderline tree? Well, for this activity, students need a D-tape and a logger's tape. You go over to the tree that is borderline and you measure the diameter. Now in this case, let's just say that that tree is about 10 inches in diameter, which it probably is. 10 inches in diameter. You take 10 and you multiply it by a fixed radius plot factor. It's called a FRP factor. Well, the FRP factor for a 10 BAF wedge prism is 2.75. Your students have to memorize that. So you take the diameter, multiply it times 2.75, and you get 27.5. Then you measure the distance between the plot center and the middle of the tree. If your answer of 27.5 is less than the distance that you measured, the tree is in. If your answer of 27.5 is greater than the distance, from the plot center to the tree, then the tree is out. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So those teams that know how to do the math on a borderline tree are going to have an advantage. So make sure your team knows how to do that. Hey, I hope this helps you. If you have any questions or comments below, or uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, comment or ask the question below and uh, I'll try to help you out as much as I can. I'm not an expert on this, but um, I know how to do it. And uh, if you got any questions, I can get an answer for you. There's quite a bit of information on the internet for you. There, are, there is nothing really out there for uh, on YouTube on this issue. Okay, last thing. Don't forget, if you have three trees that are in, multiply it times the BAF to get your answer. Record the answer in square feet per acre. Have a good day.